Hi, it's Mrs. Cat, and I'm here to look at pressure conversions with you. Um, so for right now, we are going to skip the top part of this page in your notes packet, which I believe is page four, um, and we're going to do the egg in the bottle demonstration later on. But for now, we're going to look at pressure conversions. So we've already learned how to do conversions, um, and that method is not going to change. We're still going to use our conversion factors as proportions to help us solve the um, a number of units from one unit of measure to another. Um, the difference here is going to be the conversion factors that we used. Um, in unit one, we just looked at metric conversions. So those are pretty simple in terms that our conversion factors were all based on powers of tens. Um, here, our different units of pressure measurement are going to have different conversion factors based on the instruments they're used to uh, measure that pressure. And we're going to have to be able to convert from one to another using our method. So what you have here in the center of this screen is our conversion factors. These are all based on what we call standard pressure. And this is standard atmospheric pressure. So that's the pressure that the air particles are putting on an object. Um, the standard unit of pressure is one bar, and then these are all of its equivalents in different units of pressure measurement. Um, that would be the same as 100 kilopascals, 0.987 atmospheres, 750.06 millimeters of mercury. HG is the symbol for the element mercury. 750.06 torr, which is as you can see, equivalent to millimeters of mercury, and then 14.5 PSI, that is pounds per square inch. So that's kind of maybe what you might be used to seeing pressure measurements in. So all we're going to do is convert from one to the other using our same method as we did before. The only difference here, like I said, is that we've got different conversion factors. So I'm going to convert to start out with 452 millimeters, millimeters of mercury into kilopascals. Now, I like to color code when I'm reading through a problem to mark what I know in yellow highlighter and what I'm trying to find in pink. That's a method that works for me. If that's something that's going to be helpful to you, great. Okay, use it too. So I want to know how many kilopascals there are in 452 millimeters of mercury. Now, my conversion factor I can get from all of those standard pressure units. And all I want to do is match these up. So what I know is that at standard pressure, we're going to have a pressure of 100 kilopascals and 750.06 millimeters of mercury. So that's my comparison, my ratio between those two units of pressure. So what I'm going to do here is solve for x. I'm going to cross multiply and divide. I'm going to go ahead and show my work here. Um, that I'm going to get x kilopascals times 750.06 millimeters of mercury equals 100 kilopascals times 452 millimeters of mercury. Okay, get x by itself. I'm going to divide both sides by that 750.06. Okay. Yikes, millimeters of mercury. And then I want to show how these cancel. This is just a refresher. Again, we already know how to do these conversions with this method, just showing you another example. Okay, so now I want to go ahead and do the math. I like to do mine all at once. So I'm going to take 100 times 452 divided by 750.06. Now, when I do this in my calculator, I'm going to get x equals 60.2618 something 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 kilopascals. Now, just like always, we want to make sure that we are rounding to the appropriate number of significant figures. So here we want to round to the same number that we were given in the problem. Um, because our conversion factors are going to um, be considered to be exact numbers from what we've got. 
I want to round this to three because of the 452 millimeters of mercury, which means there's one, there's two, there's three. Six tells me to round up. I'm going to make this 60.3 kilopascals. Okay. Pretty straightforward. Okay. Let's do another example using different units. This time I want to know how many pounds per square inch of pressure there is exerted on a flask with a pressure of 0.9 or excuse me, 0.892 atmospheres. So I'm gonna set this up the same way. I'm gonna do a little less work to show you that you don't have to do all of this. Okay, so I wanna know how many atmospheres there, oh, that's not true. I wanna know how many PSI there are in 0.892 atmospheres. So again, I wanna use those standard pressure measurements to set up my conversion factor. So 14.5, PSI on top and 0.987 atmospheres on the bottom. Now, just like before, I want to cross multiply and divide, but we can go ahead and do this, right? So we're going to cross multiply the 0.892 times 14.5 and then divide by the 0.987 to get X. Okay. If it is helpful to you to show all of that in your process, in your work, great, do it. If you are able to correctly solve this without showing the extra steps like I did on the first example, please go ahead and do that. But I don't want, and your teachers don't want you to show a little bit of work and not be able to get the correct answer. So let's go ahead and do this. 0.892 times 14.5 divided by 0.987. Again, I want to round to the sig figs that we were given, which is also three sig figs here. This is going to give me 13.1 pounds per square inch. All right, so that's converting between pressure units. There's one more thing we need to go over with pressure before um, you move on to the next thing in the module, and that is to talk about a manometer problem. So you've looked at the manometer demo, looked at some particle diagrams for that, um, with the flask, with the syringe connected to it, and the water that moved up and down, okay? What a, a manometer actually winds up looking like is this, okay? So these manometers have a, they're a sealed container that has gas on the inside. There's mercury in a tube, um, and then it's open on the other end so that the air pressure, the atmospheric pressure is pressing down on the other side, okay? What you need to do in order to figure out the pressure of the gas inside the manometer is to look and see what's happening with the mercury. So we wanna make sure that, I'm gonna zoom this a little bit so you can see it a little better, um, that we're understanding what's happening with the pressures. Okay, the level of the mercury is going to tell you which gas the pressure in, of the gas pressure is going to be greater in, either inside the container of the manometer or the air pressure. Um, if the levels are equal, like we see in this first picture, that means the pressure inside the flask and the pressure of the atmosphere are going to be exactly the same. So whatever you know the atmosphere pressure to be, that's the pressure of the gas inside. Okay. It's these other two examples where you have to do a little bit of, um, use a little bit of logic really to figure out what's going on. It doesn't really need to be complicated. So what you wanna look at is the level of the mercury. The lower the level of the mercury, the more pressure is being exerted on the mercury in the column. So what we see here in this center manometer is that the level of the mercury is lower on the side closest to the inside container of the manometer. That means that the pressure on the inside of the manometer is greater than the pressure of the atmosphere. The amount of pressure that it will be different by is the height of the difference of that column of mercury. Okay, now, since this is mercury inside the manometer, the pressure unit we're going to use for these is going to be millimeters of mercury. Okay. So what you would do in order to find the pressure of the gas here is find the difference in the height of the mercury columns in millimeters of mercury. And then you would take the atmospheric pressure and add those two together. And that would give you the pressure of the gas. If we wind up with the opposite scenario where the level of the mercury is lower, 
whoops, stop my screen from moving, is lower on the side that's open to the atmosphere, that tells us that the atmospheric pressure is greater than the pressure of the gas inside the manometer. So you're gonna do the same thing in reverse. You're gonna find the difference in the pressure by finding the difference in the height of the columns of mercury. And this time to find the pressure of the gas on the inside, you're gonna subtract that difference from the atmospheric pressure. You're gonna have some examples of these types of problems on worksheet number two. Um, as well as some other questions about pressure. And then worksheet three is gonna be some more of those pressure conversion problems. Um, so if you've got any questions, reach out and hopefully we're gonna be all set on pressure.